So today, folks, before Biden left for California on a fundraising trip, he mentioned something that uh, sounded like something big was coming as far as like Russian sanctions. And the timing is right on, on all of this because obviously with Navalny dying at the hands of Putin and as well, you've got the two-year anniversary of Russia's aggression on Ukraine coming up. Something something big is coming up. And, and I think I've got a handle on what that is and I wanted to share that with you. But before I get there, I just wanted to share this other thing real quick. You know, Lara Trump is vying to be co-chairwoman of the RNC. And Donald Trump has obviously endorsed her. And he's also endorsed someone else to actually run the RNC. So you would have this other stooge and then you would have Laura Trump as co-chair. Well, they plan on turning this into a family affair, folks, evidently, where the Trump's hands would be all over the money, basically. Now, what kind of money are we talking? According to Axios, the RNC has got about $8 million on hand. Um, They haven't reported anything for January, but they had $8 million on hand and the Trump um, war chest was something at about $33 million on hand. So here's what she said. Listen to this, folks. He wants to or not. No, I'm just kidding. He wants to be there. He'll be involved. My brother-in-law, Don. Um, This is a family affair for all of us. Oh, okay. Okay, we get it. So the Trump fingers are going to be all over the RNC money, folks. If Now, they're meeting. The RNC is meeting to vote on Trump's recommenda- recommendation for the, 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 you know, who's going to run the RNC as well as a co-chair. Let's see if it happens. But if it does, folks, it's just another family grift that's going to be going on. So here's Biden, folks, just before he left for California today. Have a listen to what he said. I told you we'd be announcing sanctions on Russia. We'll have a major package announced on Friday. And I'll be happy to sit with you all while doing that, okay? Okay, so you had that, and then you had Lawrence Tribe that came out and said this today, folks. So have a listen to this. I'm joined now by Lawrence Tribe, who is a professor of constitutional law at Harvard University. Thank you very much uh, for being with us. And I just wonder... I've been reading what you're saying. You're making the case, basically, for these frozen assets, all $300 billion worth, to be permanently seized now. Is that right? That's exactly right, Mark, and thank you for having me. I think now is the right time. This Saturday will be the second anniversary of Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine, an invasion that has been barbaric and accompanied by numerous violations of human rights. These assets, which were seized by the UK, the EU, various G7 countries, and Japan and the United States, seized in the sense of just being frozen at the time of the illegal invasion are now doing no one any good. They are simply sitting there. We've passed the point, uh, as Lord Haig pointed out in the London Times today, and as the Prime Minister of Estonia pointed out in the Financial Times when these assets will ever be returned to Russia because it would violate international law to return them rather Hmm. than making sure that Russia compensates Ukraine for all the harm. So rather than having them just sit there, they should be immediately seized and transferred to Ukraine. Interesting point that he made there, folks. Did you hear him say that we're past the point of even returning the money because it would violate international law for us to simply give Russia back these seized assets. Now, I want to also point this out to you. So that's an interesting development. And take a look at this article. So this article goes all the way back to December 29th, 2023. It's from Reuters and it's entitled Kremlin says it has a list of Western assets to be seized if Russian assets are confiscated. So it goes on to say that the Kremlin on Friday warned the West that it had a list of U.S., European, and other assets that would be seized if G7 leaders decided to go ahead and confiscate $300 billion in frozen Russian central bank reserves. 
Interestingly enough, it also said leaders of the group of seven major industrialized nations will discuss a new legal theory that would enable the seizure of frozen Russian assets when they meet in February. Two sources familiar with the plans and a British official said on Thursday. So here's what uh, Dmitry Peskov, the Kremlin spokesman, here's what he said. It will be a significant blow to the main parameters of the international economy. It will undermine the international economy. He said it will undermine the confidence of other countries in the United States, as well as in the EU as economic guarantors. Therefore, such actions are fraught with very, very serious consequences. Well, he's right, but I think all the consequences are going to be on the Russian state. It, it's because they're not playing economically and militarily with the rest of the free world. I think it's going to be them on the outside of all of this trade and as he describes it as the EU and the United States as economic guarantors, he's going to be on the outside of that. So the situation that he's describing, at least as far as I can see, is not going to be a problem for us. It's going to be a problem for Russia and Russia's economy. Now, keep in mind that Russia, I think, has an economy that's the size of Australia, certainly less than California. So they've been playing a big game here, folks, for a very long time. Um, Russia has. And this military action against Ukraine was an ill-conceived military action that's definitely, it's it's throttled their economy in a, in a bad way for them. It's hobbled their military like you've never seen before. But this is interesting. So we don't know exactly what Russia will do, if anything, if this happens. But it, it's looking, folks, it's looking like $300 billion is going to be heading towards the Ukraine and there will be a consortium if that money is released that will serve as oversight you know, for what Ukraine needs. And what can they do with that? They need to rebuild all of that infrastructure that's been torn down. You've had you've tremendous loss of life at the hands of Russia. And with some of that money, no doubt they can buy the arms that they need from the United States if they so choose. So watch this as it's unfolding, folks. That's the lead and um, pretty good chance that we're going to see all of that money flowing to Ukraine.